Hello and welcome to me and my golf. We're your coaches, Piers and Andy, and it's time for the Impact Show. And you've joined us at Stockport Golf Club in the northwest of England. And Andy, this is a really exciting one for us today, isn't it? It is. We've got a couple of special guests with us today. We've got performance coach Dr. Carl Morris, who's worked with some of the best players in the world, including Darren Clark, Lee Westwood, and Louis Eustace, and two who have won the Open Pierce at St. Open. Andrews. And we also have Gary Nichol, ex European tour coach, again, worked with Ryder Cup players. Um, and experienced coach Pierce yes. on the European Tour. And today we're going to show you guys how to take your range game to the golf course. This is a popular one and a common thing that people struggle with. So don't go anywhere, let's take charge of your game. So guys, welcome to the show. Gary, great to have you here. Thanks for inviting us. Oh, good to see you. Great pleasure to be it's been a, it's from been here. A, <laughs> we can I was going to say, long arms. Was gonna say it's been a while, but we just recorded a podcast trip <laughs> at the club there. So uh, no, it's good to have you on the show. Great to um, be here. We're talking long game. Before we get into that, you guys have collaborated and, and got have a, indeed, uh, yeah. a book out. Yes. A lost exciting. Art Very putting. excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. When did that come out? We launched it at the Scottish Open at Golden this year. Okay. okay. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been very well received and the sales are going nicely. So yeah, it's been it's been a great journey to be honest. It's been good fun. Brilliant. So we're going to do a video later on after this talking about putting. But make sure if you want to delve deep into that book, make sure you click the link in the description. Go and check it out. It's well worth a read. Now, long game, guys. Yeah. Yes. One of the questions as golf coaches that we get asked is, how can I take my range game? to the golf course. I'm sure you, t you two have experienced that once or twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Times. yeah. once or twice yeah. every day. I hit it good yesterday on the range, but didn't yeah. come with me to the golf course. Exactly, yeah. there's something we want to talk about today. Yeah. Obviously, with yourself, Carl, you're dealing with um, the mindset, if you like, and coaching golfers in, in terms of how to transform that, but really how to, to practice that and take that game onto the golf course. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what you do and how we can start to yeah. understand it? I, I think an interesting model to look at, and so people will understand it better, is that on, a, on any given shot that you ever play in golf, there's actually three parts to every shot, whether we like it or not. There's, there's the part here, what you think about before you hit the shot. Yep. Some people call it pre-shot routine or whatever. I like to call it phase one. There's the, there's the bit here when you're actually stood over the ball and you're gonna play the shot. And there's maybe the most important bit is what happens after that little white ball is separated from your club face. <laughs> it's how you react to that shot. Now, unfortunately, when we go onto the, onto the range, guess which bit we only practice? Absolutely. We're only in this bit. Mm. And the problem also on the range is that when I hit a bad shot on the range, I've got a bunch of balls here to make me feel better straight away. And I get on the golf course, and unfortunately now there's the post shot. Yeah. There's what happens afterwards, how you actually deal with that. So one of the things I would really like to sort of golfers to explore is, can you bring this idea more to your practice? So that you're actually replicating the very things that you're gonna do mentally as well as physically on the golf course. Because yeah. if we don't look at this, we're missing a big part of the puzzle. And this is huge, isn't it? Now obviously for yourself, Gary, and you, Carl, you spent years on tour yep. developing this with the best players in the world. Yep. So if they're having to do it, and I'm sure you guys have got some horror stories about how some players have done it wrong, so if they're having to do it, everyone who's watching this should be listening right now and trying to implement something that we get out of this. Without question, absolutely. It's vitally, vitally important. And as Carl said, we, as golfers in general, tend to spend much more time in the middle section mm -hmm. and not enough before and after. This makes sense though, doesn't it? This is, this is something that is, is there in front it's of us on a, a video camera. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 you know, absolutely. And, yeah, yeah. and one of the things we like to say to people that when you're actually on the golf course, there's actually only two of the three phases here that you've got total control over, okay. which is one and three. Yeah. Yeah. The middle bit, for even the best in the world, comes and goes a little bit, but you can truly own one and three. Yeah. But if you never practice it, it's never gonna come with you onto the course. Yeah. And I think the key thing is the guys are asking, how can I take my range game to the golf course? Well, the, look, what, what is your range session like? Is it totally different to the golf course? And yeah. often we see that is the case with the golfers, isn't it really? Yeah. And I think this is something that, sorry Gary, I think this is something that, you know, everyone watching this will understand that the mental game, the mind game is important and they should be working on it, but how do they work on it? Yeah. Well, actually, with these two here, we've got a structure. A little we've bit got to some it. structure, exactly, yeah. yeah. And I think if we, when we talk about what we're going to do in the golf course, if we can replicate that in our range work, Yes. You know, we ask all our students, where, you know, what other sports have you played in your life? And they play, you say, football, rugby. Okay, where did you do your football training? Well, football pitch. Tennis, where did you do your tennis? Oh, a tennis court. <laughs> Golf, 
driving range. Yeah, yeah. Totally different environment. Totally different it? environment. Absolutely. One one word I'd ask all the viewers to think about is context, is because your brain responds to a context or an environment. Mm. You know, we're, we're very different. If we walk into a library, we'll behave very differently than we were on a football terrace. Yeah. You know, and it's the same with golf that the context called practice ground and the context called golf course are very, very different. But we can make them more similar. So we've got to, we, we've we, got to make that con make context that, so as opposed to be miles away from each other. Yeah. We've got to bring them bring closer, it together. closer exactly. together. Yeah. 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 So can we go through what the guys should be really doing when they go to the driving range, what they can practice so then they, they can transfer what they're doing there easier onto the golf course. I mean, one simple thing I would, I would suggest people look at is that, you know, we were talking about it earlier, that, that when you go on the golf course, what do you have with you on the golf course? Well, you have a, you have a yardage chart, you know, and that never comes with you to, to, to practice. But what you could do on the, on, the, on the range, and it's great if you do this with a buddy as well. You can really, because I get a lot out of practicing with other people, go to the range, have a, have, have a, a, pra a, a book with you, a yardage book, and actually, you're on the golf course then, to all intents and purposes. Right, we're on the, we're on the first hole at Royal Birkdale or, or wherever it is. And then start to create shots. The number one thing I would like people to understand is every single shot you ever play in golf is a unique creation. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that you're never going to have before. never had before, you're never going to have again. So in practice, if you work on the, on the first phase here, on the range, is actually understanding how important what we call quality questions are because everybody talks about oh I lost my concentration well how do you get it back mm -hmm. well if I ask everybody watching this video now what, 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 what's in the background what noise can you hear in the background immediately your, your attention will go to that so questions focus our attention yeah. and we believe that every golfer should ask a couple of good questions in this first bit here you know, perhaps what, what is the most important question that you can ever ask is, what's the shot? What is the shot? What are you trying to do? What is the shot you're trying to play here? Because when you've got a clear idea of what the shot is, then you can ask yourself, okay, how does that need to feel? Yeah. So the practice swing then has real relevance. So that then you're walking into this middle bit, I, I like to call it programming the computer. You know, you step into this middle bit and the body's armed with a clear map. Yeah. It knows where to go. And then all the training that you've done then, all the work on the swing, has a chance to take over. But I, I say it's a bit like a sat-nav as well. If you don't program a sat-nav, don't get annoyed if you get lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the questions is key, isn't it? Because I'd say the majority of golfers aren't and asking, maybe not asking any questions. No. Certainly asking some of them the wrong questions. Well, if they are asking questions, they'll be asking bad ones. Yeah. yeah. You know, how far is that bunker over there? Yeah. Will I hit it into the trees like I did last Saturday? Yeah. yeah. Will I top it like I did in the third hole? Yeah. All these kind of even the right points where they're thinking about the three put they've just had on the last hole Absolutely. as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I've got to yeah, make yeah, it back yeah. so I've yeah. got this one harder to so get Correct. it down further so I can get it closer. Correct. And question speed bring you back into the moment. Yeah. You know, we've all heard that cliche, play one shot at a time, stay in the moment. Mm. Well, questions are a way of doing that. Yeah. They bring you to this task. And this is what it's all about, isn't it? We're getting you to, it's a process that you're getting people to focus on. And I think people will be aware of that, but it's like, well, okay, how do I do this? How to do the this? This is what we wanted to do with you yeah. guys, is to go through this. Should we get you going through it and actually yeah. getting and hitting a golf shot, yeah? Yeah. And maybe you can I'll talk him I'll through I'll it as we go I'll through that. That's going to work. You can talk me I'll through. Coach through. me through it, Carl, please. He needs all the help. I need some help. Don't we all? Don't we all? He's going to slice it. He's going to pierce his driver. Yeah, there we go. So we're stood on the uh, the 18th here at uh, Stockport. It's a lovely, lovely hole. Very nice. Now, if, if I if I ask you to come back here a second, Andy, just come back in this direction. So you're actually now in in phase one. Now, if I simply said to you, as you as you look down this hole here, what does a good shot look like here? A good shot looks like, for me, when I would Pierce say. One, that's what he's going to say. <laughs> I'd say a pretty, a pretty neutral shot, straight at the red marker in the distance. Right. I wouldn't be looking at shaping it too much. I'd just be pretty, pretty happy with a, a fairly neutral shape. So straight away, what we've done there with Andy asking that question, I'm sure in your brain as you were asking that question, you started to see some images of the shot. Yeah. People get very hung up on, oh, I can't visualise. Well, you don't have to visualise. You will do naturally if you ask the correct question. Yeah. But what we've done now, we've actually created a very clear intent. Andy's now got a very clear idea of what he's actually trying to do on, on, on this hole, in this moment. Yeah. Okay, so now the next question I would ask is, okay, what do you need to feel yep. to produce that shot? Yep. So this is where the practice swing has real relevance then. So I've sort of asked the question, now I'm sort of feeling... You're feeling the movement the that's movement going to produce that required. shot. Yeah. 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 Relevant to the shot that you're picturing. Yeah. 
So now one thing that we do know, as Andy actually steps into the shot here, yeah. he's done his bit. I, I like to say to people, you know, as long as you've actually created a clear intent and you've felt the movement required, you've done your bit. It doesn't guarantee a good shot, but my goodness, we've increased our chances. Yeah, you've got a chance, haven't you? You've like to... Gary said before, he's not talking about slicing it, topping it, what he did last no, Thursday. No. <laughs> when you can ask that question, what does a good shot look like? You're not picturing anything other than a good shot. And it gives you a pathway to where you want to go. Exactly, yeah. and that's, the, and that's the, what I was just going to touch on there. When you asked that question, Carl, there was nothing else in my mind that could have entered that my, my mind because it was like, there's the red dot, there's the ball flight I want. I'm not, it's not possible for me to think of anything else. Yeah, yeah. You, you're absorbed. You know, the great thing about a brain is a question answering machine. We become absorbed in the answer, but the answer is providing a map for your body to work with. Yeah. So as we said before, please, all that training you've done can now take over. So I've programmed the computer, yep. I've asked the right question, I've got the right feeling now. Yep. Now it's time to, to move into the shot then really, Gary, isn't it? So yep. what sort of things when I'm into the shot should I then be thinking and sort of working on? Everyone's different. So there's no, the golden rule is there are no golden rules for me. But the, the, what the clearer you have that image of the shot you're about to create, you should then just be thinking, right, I'm gonna, I've seen that shot, that's the shot I want to create, I'm going to now bring that to life. Okay. We create what we see, basically. Yeah. So the clearer the picture you have of the shot you want to hit down that fairway, if you go ahead and create it without too much interference from body positions, hand positions, club positions, yeah. all that kind of stuff, which is just going to, it's going to make that picture or that image fade very, very quickly. Yeah. So the clearer that image is, the easier it is to react to it. Yeah, I like that. And I think the good thing about that is, is I'm not over the golf ball here trying to create th thoughts and feelings in the golf swing. I'm doing that pre to get that yes, all done. And then I'm, I'm basically over the golf ball and I'm really focusing exactly what I want, really looking at that target with no real thoughts, just the feelings that I'm bringing from. Yeah, your, from your brain and body know what to do. Yeah. We've done it before. We've all done it before. We all know what to do. You know, so as a, as a broad generalization, I mean, I think what most golfers do is that they, they don't think enough in this bit yeah. and then think too much yes. here. Yeah. Yeah. So you see classically the, over the ball and the stuck because now the brain's trying to say, well, what do you yeah. want me to do? Yeah. Whereas if we program the computer back here, this bit actually comes a bit more reactive. Yeah. Yeah. We Definitely. just play as play here. Okay, so shall I hit this one and then we'll talk to, about I the think a good thing to do is step back and go through that and just show, show so how let's, quick let's, it let's, actually let's, goes. Let's go through it all in real time. In real okay, time. So, so if I say to you, Again, Andy, okay, what does a good shot look like here? Okay, Gary, yep. So this is either. definitely a more <laughs> neutral shot straight at that red post for me. Be respectful. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Show me how that needs to feel. So I normally have a couple of practice swings just feeling that motion. Okay. Right. And I'll stand back, I'll make sure I pick my line. I'll walk in. Couple of looks. Wow, well, that was pretty much at it. Beaut. Yeah, good shot. There might be a future for you in this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'll, 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 I don't I'll give this that. YouTube up, I think. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. <laughs> so I think the key is from now, obviously, we've got this one here, which you said arguably is the most important one, Carl. Now, for instance, if he hits a shot and slices it into the trees, what sort of things are we seeing happening here? Yeah, it's. With a shot like that, this bit isn't much of a problem. No. Because you've, this you've, part you've, becomes very easy. <laughs> yes. When you've just did a beautiful shot like that, exactly as you've described. By the way, before we get to this bit, how good does it actually feel to create something in your mind and then, and then pull it off? And then pull bring it, it to off. life, yeah. absolutely. That really feels good. That's why we yeah. play the game. Yeah. But in this bit, you know, from, from Tiger Woods downwards, we're going to hit a lot of bad shots. That's, that's the reality when you're on the golf course. But in this bit, I would say the number one skill is the skill of acceptance is accept the fact that you did everything you could here to create the shot, you stepped in, you let go here. A big, a big uh, tool we use is what we call facts rather than opinions. Mm. Okay. Now, opinions are, I'm useless, I'm an idiot, I can't play this game. That really doesn't go anywhere. Well, it does go, <laughs> it, it does go somewhere, it goes to bad golf. <laughs> but facts are, okay, the ball's done this, the ball's done that, okay, well, what did I do? Yeah. Was the club was a, was the path from the inside? From was the club face closed? Whatever. When when you can actually deal with facts, then you move on from that. Mm. You draw close to it. I remember years ago there was a story that 
um, one, of the, one of the top players had what he called the 10 yard line and basically the deal was that once he'd walked over this line in this bit, whatever had happened previously was, was in the past, it, it, it was done. It's, it's, it's easier to say it than do it, yeah. but if you make a real good commitment to be better in the post shot, because what we don't want is that the, sh the post shot here, what I call contaminating the next shot. Because if I'm getting really upset and angry about what's just happened here, good luck in asking good questions on the next one. You're just yeah, going to so. carry that with you. And it's interesting, the player that Carl actually mentioned is, was very good at bouncing back. So we're not going to tell you who it was. Post down below who you think that golfer was and we'll see. He was pretty good, by the way. Well, he he's decent. Decent. still is pretty good. He's still, still, still okay. Yeah. He's bounced back ability. He's had a bit of a okay. comeback, which yeah. is... Yeah. Uh, Don't yeah. give away too much. <laughs> Don't give away too much. <laughs> Okay, so look, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's inevitable that people when they get into this, into this area, into this phase, are going to be upset and they are going to, you know, they're going to question themselves, the self, negative self-talk, all the yeah. bad things that we talk about. What, do they have any skills that they can do other than that 10-yard line that they can a, remedy a, this? Another, another interesting one, based on a, a lot of research that's been done, is that the mind leads the body, but also the body leads the mind in the sense that the way that you carry yourself can have a big impact on how you feel. Now, if you think about it, if, because if you did a bad shot and you were walking down the fairway here and we videoed you, guess what that video would probably look like, you know? And, and the, interesting <laughs> thing is exactly. about, the interesting thing is about this, is when your body language drops, then you go very much into internal dialogue. Yep. You start to go inside of yeah, your head yeah, yeah. questioning your, your you know, your will to exist in the human race kind of thing. Golf depression. Yeah, yeah, Sanity. Yeah, yeah. So a very, I mean, we've been using this for years and it's interesting in other sports how these ideas have sort of taken hold as well now that when you walk down the fairway, you know, if you think this is an issue for you in your game, just make a promise to yourself that the next time you play golf, the one rule that you have is you're going to walk down the fairway is you're going to keep your eyes above the flag. If you think of people like Poulter and Westwood, who I know we've spoke about before doing that, you know, think about Poulter walks down a fairway. Yeah. You know, it looks like he's going to go and fight somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but he's always yeah. not, he's never into this stage here. You know, when you think of the language that we use in life, you know, I'm feeling a bit down. Mm. Ah, but things seem to be looking up. <laughs> you know, it's that, it's, yeah. it's such simple things in a way that, you know, Will, will keeping your eyes above the level of the fags stop you hitting bad shots? No. But it'll will, stop you beating yourself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will Which it allows you to be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the key for me, is that if you get better at the third bit, the post shot, you, you, you're a lot better at the, at the pre-shot on, on, on the, the next, next one. And yeah. The good thing with this, Andy, as well, this is common sense. Yeah. None of this is, people aren't going to be like writing, Oh, this is amazing. This is like, no, you know, no, how have you not got to... I call it the elusive price. obvious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elusive it's obvious we just can't see it. Yeah. But do we apply it? That's the key. That's and the more key. importantly, do we work on it? Yeah. No, don't, don't expect this to work just going out on the golf course. That's where, we've, as we said, it's, it's so important to practice this. Yeah. A portion of your practice replicates the real game. So when you do go to the range to practice, you're trying to create a shot. Yeah. You're not just working on your backswing. Because what happens when your brain, if you say, okay, I'm really working my backswing today, when you get there, your brain says, okay, what are we, what we going to do now? And it will go somewhere. Yeah. Who knows where? It will go somewhere. But that's not how we, we can't play golf like that. No. So we have to practice creating shots. We have to practice going through phase one, phase two, phase three on every shot. Yeah. So if you go to the range, please don't be hitting balls. Create shots. Yeah. Big difference. And I think there'll be some difference. guys who are watching this who will have a routine on the golf course that potentially may work, yeah. but they're not using it on the range. And no, I think, yeah. you know, then again, they're sort of, they're not really getting the maximum out of it, are they? If they can involve that side of things on exactly. the range, pre, during, and post, involve that type of practice, you know, taking that onto the golf course again is just going to help and replicate, as we always talk about, yeah. replicate the real game That's on right. the range compared yes. to obviously out here on the course. Yeah, yeah. We talked about it earlier the idea that you train for golf on a range and then you go and practice golf on the golf course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tra training has to replicate the real thing. Mm. There you have it. So look, I think we could talk about this for hours. I think we've all got a passion for this. We we've all indeed. got, you know, ex um, massive experiences in this as well of golfers yeah. who have failed countless times. So I think the, the big message is, yes, of course, watch this video back, look at the key notes, but think about the questions you ask yourself, think about your actions and think about your actions and the questions you ask yourself here. Absolutely. If you do all of that, you've got a chance and to And promise do. yourself next time that you play, you're going to be a, much more aware of, of one and three yeah. Yeah. And, and resolve to get better at it. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
to look fantastic. Thank you so much, Carl. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much as well. Thank you well for done. your Good time. Show. We haven't finished with it yet, though, because we're going to the Myanmar right. Golf Weekly and we're talking about putting the lost art of putting your yes. book. So make sure you go and check that out at Amazon and make sure you check out the Myanmar Golf Weekly. And this is what we have in store for you. Hi there, me and my golfers, and welcome to your Me and My Golf Weekly. And we've got some special guests, Andy, and we're yeah. talking about putting, and I might need a little bit of help with this. So we've got Dr. Carl Morris, some help. and nice we have Gary you. Nickel. Good to see you, Carl. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Gary. Great to be here. Joining us. We really kind of explore a lot of performance ideas, really. Yeah, we're a great believer in if you want to work on your stroke and get the mechanics better and put a fit in and all the rest of it, fine. But when you get out there, what art are you going to actually do? Are used to knock the ball in the hole. Now the one thing that can overcome gravity is momentum. Yeah. Too so, much or too little of one or the other. Yeah. Too much momentum, too little momentum, gravity can't work. So we hope you enjoyed the video there guys. If you did then hit the like button to help reach as many golfers as we can. Also subscribe to the channel if you don't already and if you think this is going to help your friends make sure you share the video also. Absolutely and also talking of videos why would you not want to check out that Me and My Golf Weekly talking about the lost art of putting. So click the link in the corner go and take advantage of the free trial at meandmygolf.com and we'll see you there. Cheers guys.